Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and this is Peer to Spring Software's 49th Frequently Asked Question video. Kind of makes me think we should do something special for number 50, like a 50th, I don't know, like a 50th anniversary or something. I don't know. Well, we'll think about it. Uh, anyway, it's been a while since we published a video using one of our Mac computers, so we decided to devote this video to a little known Mac tip. Although, I'll tell you, uh, Windows users can, can stay, stick with us here because this is also going to apply to Windows operating system as well. And it's a, it's a good thing to know. We learned about it from our users who called to say that they had difficulty printing. Our programs, for previewing and printing purposes, they send things to the word processor. Just like TurboTax sends things to Adobe. But anyway, they press the print button, which sends the designated form to your word processor for previewing and printing, but nothing would happen. Now, even though I'll be discussing this issue in the context of Pure to Spring software, the principle I'll be discussing applies to all data files, and that includes files created by any program. And even though I'm demonstrating this on a Mac computer, like I said, it applies to Windows files as well. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure you understand what a file extension is. Everyone's familiar with file names. Uh, if you created a word processing file in Microsoft Word, you'd give it a name like My Letter to Cousin Lynette. I could do that, probably. I don't think I will. Yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate that. But anyway, if I gave it that name, my document, what am I cheesing out? No, okay, I can do that. What the heck? Can't find my word. There's word. Let's get a blank document up here. I'm going through a lot of trouble for this. Hope you people are appreciating it. No, I'm only kidding. Trying to create a blank document. Not really happening, though. Maybe you have to double click? Oh, I guess that was it. Okay. God, I, it's been so long now, I don't remember what I was supposed to do. Okay, yeah, I remember. Okay, test letter. I'm going to click on file, save as, and give it a name. Boy, this took my letter to cousin Lynette. And I don't know why I left the spaces out. It really shouldn't make any difference, but I did. You don't have to do that. I'm going to click on, you see the file type here, docx. I guess that was the whole part of this demonstration, uh, the last minute, was just to show you about this. That's the file extension, that docx on the end. That part of the file name that's after the dot is called the extension. Extensions have been around as long as I have been around. What they do is or at least one of their purposes is to tell the operating system what kind of file it is because there's so many files there's an infinite number of file types there's word processing files spreadsheet files PDF files RTF files music files video files the list goes on now I'm sure you can name probably a hundred more if you thought about it for a moment and by the way if you're looking at your screen let's get hold on let's get out of here I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to do anything more about that. Didn't I cancel already? What's going on? Okay. You know what? If it doesn't want to cancel, or I'm probably doing something silly wrong, let me just get it out of the way. That's what I wanted to do. I want to go to the Documents folder here. I don't know. Okay. The extension is the part of the file name after the dot. So you see here the extension is any, this one is BP8, BP8, BP8. Folders don't have extensions that you would see anyway. BP8, BP8, here's a TXT. Uh, those are the uh, different file types. You may look at your screen and say, hey, wait a minute, I don't see any of those things after the file names. Well, I don't, I'm not sure how 
I've been with the Mac for long enough that I can't remember back en long enough to tell you whether it comes defaulted to hiding the extensions or not, but I like to see the extensions. Sometimes it takes a little of the mystery out. It, normally it's not important, but when something goes wrong, it's the first thing you want to do probably is see the extension. So the purported reason for hiding it in the first place is to protect the user from information overload. Yeah, that's a good thing, but I think it's show. I, I think it still should default to uh, showing you and allowing you to hide it rather than the other way around. Anyway, who cares what I think? Often the system will use icons instead, and you see icons. They're kind of grayed out, but you can't you can't see them that well. But that'll tell you the if you have your um, f your extensions turned off. That icon will tell you what kind of file type it is. Uh, well, you know what? Real quick. I'll show you how to turn uh, turn the extensions on and off. You go, uh, hopefully, I shouldn't have said quick. I'm going to Finder, Preferences. Here, there, you see that? Show all file name extensions. I have it checked, yes, show them all. If you didn't want to see them, maybe you're just a computer expert. You don't even need to see that kind of stuff or it's just visual clutter that you want to get rid of, then you clear that checkbox and you won't see these. And that's how easy it is to turn on and off. Isn't that nice? An, ex an example of an extension that you're probably already familiar with is these word processing ones. They're DOCX. And that tells the operating system that the file was created by Microsoft Word. And that Microsoft Word application in the applications folder is the program that it's let's say quote unquote associated with and that's the other thing that extensions do they're linked to applicate not all the time but they're most all the time they're they're ex they're linked to applications so that if you double click on a particular type of file the computer knows to start up the associated application and open the selected file isn't that cool could we try it Let's do, let's I'm going to double click on whoop where's my text let's double click on this text file and see what happens It opened up a program what is it oh, it's text edit All right you so you see how that works and that tells us that the text files files with the text extension are associated with text edit up here okay now, what did I also want to show you about this? Okay, you know what it is? Up till now, I think I've been telling you things that you might already know, but there are times when the association is incorrect, and in that case, it helps to know how to create the association, and here's how you do it. Find the type of file you want to associate. Let's say it's the RTF file. Let's go here. I'll find an RTF. There right here. Okay. I, I right click on it and I select move to trash. No, no, I'm only kidding. Don't do that. Get info. And then in get info, here it is. Here's the key. Open with. It's telling the program, it's not the program, it's telling the operating system that when I double click on any RTF file, not just this one, any one, Start it up in Microsoft Word. And one beautiful thing about it is that uh, you can, uh, when you first do this, if you have to do it, it really is working only on the file that you've got selected right. Get info of this file, send temp RTF. But if you change it, or when you make the first selection, like let's change it to Microsoft Word. Uh, no, let's change it to text edit. Where's text? Yeah, here we go. Let's change it to text edit. You see what happens? This change all button is enabled. And what it's asking now is it's saying, okay, if you double click on an RTF file, Word is going to start. But do you want to do this, or text edit rather, do you want to do this with all files or, or just this one that we have highlighted here? And, uh, and so you can go and you can say, you can click on change all. And, uh, and tell it, no, I want you to do on everything. 
So otherwise, you'd need to set the association with each file individually, and I don't think that's something you'll ever want to do. I can't remember ever needing to do something like that. Change all is the way to go. There probably is a reason to only do it to one file, but anyway, that's the trick. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the test file up. I'll just do a quick printing test since uh, this is going to enable that uh, RTF or um, clear that RTF file. Oh, this is it. Okay, in the RTF file is associated with Word. So so right up here. So I was able to change it because you know I, I changed it to. Uh, text edit and for some reason I don't know security issues not my not my bag of things to fix and you know what as an that's a cool tip to know no matter what but as an aside if you have problems printing in our apps one solution is to ensure that the RTF file type is set to word and not text edit because you'll get some crazily formatted uh, file result. My Mac is already, it, it's set correctly now because we just we just tried it out. I can go to a form like uh, form 1.0 and hit the print button. And it's creating an art, wow, that's fast. Uh, it created the RTF file, send temp again. Because Why send temp? Because these are just temporary files. The real file is the is the BP8 file, and the, the and you're going to print this out, and you don't care to save it probably even. But anyway, that's what it is. And the, this RTF file called Sentemp RTF uh, automatically generated uh, or started Word up a, as the associated file, and that's the way it should be. So wow, I, I really made this a lot longer by um, maybe not being so prepared as I could have been. Uh, anyway. We could fix that in the editing. So don't forget what I said earlier. All of this stuff applies to Windows computers. I mean, you know, I should see if I can switch fast to the Windows computer and show you. I'm going to see. I was uh, remoted into my Mac computer. I wasn't really sitting at it. So I'm going to uh, disconnect. You know, I'm not really. Let's, let's see what I can do here. I'm going to work with this file association thing. And, and you know what? I'm in Windows 11, and I don't, don't recall uh, having done this before in Windows. Yeah, here it is. I hope you were watching what I was doing, because I wasn't. Uh, but here it is. Uh, look at this. Hide extensions for known file types. Now, this is in Windows. And I said Windows 11, but I'm telling you, I'll bet if you looked in Windows 7 and you got to this dialog, it's the exact same one. Nothing's changed. Anyway, uh, so that, that's how you do that in Windows. And now the music can rightfully take over. It is time for me to wrap it up. And, uh, and, and you see that uh, that can be done in Windows as well as Mac. Also, if you like this video, Remember that we have a whole series of FAQ videos that we prepare especially for law offices. I, I should qualify that by saying that many of our videos apply to other businesses and offices and individuals. Also, if you found this video interesting, don't hesitate to click on the like button or better yet, subscribe to our monthly video. We'll never bomb you out with videos. We send out one a month, if that. So anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. And until next time, stay healthy and happy. I sincerely wish you all the best.